Hello and welcome back to an AP class review. Uh, I'm reviewing stat, chem, and CSP. All right, that's what happens uh, when you write the, the C part first. Anyway, so, uh, Let's start with, you know, left to right. So stat, I, I didn't really enjoy going to stat class. Like every day was kind of like, I don't really want to go there. Uh, because it's just a lot of lecturing and you have to learn the content. It's kind of like um, BC calculus where uh, it's not really about like doing creative stuff or anything that's like hands-on. It's more like just um, do the problems and then learn the skills. And you know that's okay, but stat is like uh, do the applications and then what you actually learn is maybe not that applicable in uh, real life. Although, you know, uh, there's some portions that are kind of usable. Uh, most of it is calculator based, calculator based, or, you know, using uh, the formula sheets. So it's really, you can't really apply it to anything just like in your head. It's more like, you'd have to take out your calculator and then start writing some stuff down. And you would need a lot of data. Um, let's see, so the main complaints, I guess, um, you can do that. So, uh, above I'll write the negative things, below I'll write the positive. Uh, so what was good, let's start there since uh, I just wrote, I just talked about the bad stuff. Alright, so the good stuff, there was some probability, which you don't get to learn in um, most math classes in the US. Uh, I kind of strolled through that because I learned it last summer in um, SAMS. But it is nice to learn. Another thing is um, there's some like combinatorics, so I guess I would be included. Uh, there's definitely some statistics vocabulary. Now the vocabulary, some of it is like really useless, um, but some of it is like something that you'll, things that you'll definitely need to know in like data science. Like for example, median, mean, uh, those kinds of like keywords. Quartile, also important. So those ideas. Oh, and, and the graphs, learning how to read them. The bad part was drawing the graphs. Um, and then too much calculator and, uh, I guess on the actual test, they don't make you type stuff into the calculator that much. Um, let's see, not really applicable as I said. All right, so that's it for stat, I guess. Next for chem, the bad part. Um, let's see. So I had this complaint. The last two quarters is way harder than everything that goes before it. I think it's the last one quarter, actually. The last two units, so it's um, 
thermochemistry, which is like entropy and stuff. And then there's electrochemistry. And there you have to reuse um, the, what's it called? Something about the numbers. It's like ionization numbers or something? Lewis numbers? I don't remember. Um, basically like, oh, it's oxidization numbers. Oxidized, oxidization. Uh, and you also have to do like the weird, um, there's like two beakers and there's like the wire and then you have like two um, things forming on them. Uh, one's like decreasing in size because it's losing all this all the electrons. Other ones like gaining like gaining um, atoms. But there's also like the salt bridge. Okay, anyway, I'm not gonna like go into that. But chem is pretty fun overall. That's why I kind of enjoyed going there. Um, the fun part, well, you get to do experiments. Those are fun, for me at least. Uh, what else? Other than experiments, I would say, uh, you can do well if you just study. I mean, all of these require a lot of studying if you're, you know, just like average at it. Um, even if you're good, you should still study because you're not actually good unless you've actually practiced before or you can just memorize everything on the first go that's kind of like not what is applicable to like 99% of people now um, let's see there's experiments there's some math elements if you're good at math, you won't have any trouble with the calculations. You might even be able to derive some of the stuff on your own uh, during the test, actually. So, uh, although chemistry has become, you know, less math, math dependent, I mean the course, less math dependent over the last couple of years, according to my teacher, it's still very useful. Um, Oh, another kind of stat is like, there's no actual, um, there's no actual like curriculum on the website. So you just kind of have to go to your own textbook, which is really annoying and do the problems there as review. So there's no curriculum on the website. You don't even have like courses and or anything online and so the pro here is there's um and then another con is there's no i don't think there's any uh multiple choice online uh for the past years, although I guess they're just kind of the same thing as, um, they're just the same thing as, what's it called? They're just the same thing as the, the practice things that your teacher might give you. So I guess that's not too much to complain about. Uh, CSP, okay. Uh, bad is the rubric. Basically, everyone in my class agreed. The rubric for uh, the projects is really disgusting because it makes you use certain elements like classes, even though you might not need classes. Uh, actually, they don't make you use classes. They make you use functions. And I guess functions are kind of useful, so... But... They make your functions need an input. 
which is really annoying. And then they also need an output, which is also really annoying. Like what if all you're doing is drawing stuff onto the screen in that function? Why would you need to return anything? Just obnoxious. Um, let's see. Uh, it was taught in Python this year at my school. Uh, and Python is really popular. So having students know that lets you bring them into machine learning and, you know, data science applications. Um, what else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, without without the the course, I would not be able to run my coding club at all. So, um, the reason for that is if they ha if they don't know Python, they can't do machine learning. If they don't know if they don't know Python, I have to teach them all over again. And there's barely enough time to teach machine learning because it's so complicated. Uh, and, you know, since some of the people there had already taken Python where they know a little bit, then, uh, they can just get right, right, started right away with, um, machine learning. Uh, yeah, the worst part of coding club was probably having to teach multiple levels at the same time. It's kind of like the problem of if you only had one level of class at your high school um because like for example you'll have the kids who are really good at something they have to dumb themselves down and the kids who are really bad at something they might not even learn anything at all so um yeah that the python that switch was good because java is kind of just like uh, I don't think there's any machine learning frameworks in there. At least I don't really know any because I've just been doing stuff in Python. Um, but Java, while it is, you know, a nice language, very popular, doesn't mean it's, you know, but the best for machine learning. And I don't think Python's, I guess Python has all the frameworks built in by the people from outside who write stuff in C. Uh, so, I mean, Python, I guess it's only good because all the libraries are here. Uh, anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. The course, the tests were, tests are easy. And that's, that's if you know, uh, that's if you know some basic programming. So if you know like a little bit of programming, like for example, you have like a hundred hours of programming. Uh, I mean, a hundred is like not that much, but I guess it's like, Maybe even 50 hours would be enough to let you ace all the tests. Um, hmm. Okay, so there were also like the really disgusting ambiguous questions. Um, There's the multiple choice questions. They're ambiguous. Um, and these are mostly like theory. So can't really do much about that. Uh, the good part was maybe cybersecurity. That unit was interesting. Um, there's also like the data unit which helped, um, I guess, bring people into the mindset of what the coding club does. So those are two decently hard units, even for me. Uh, there's also how the internet works. 
I didn't know that before. Exactly. I kind of just know like some things like everyone has an IP address and for some reason there's like 255 in it and it turns out that's because it's um, 8 bits for each uh, between the periods. So there's going to be like this is the maximum IPv4. So that's the, the IP address that's like the maximum number. Uh, and this is like, um, this is 32 bits, I'm pretty sure. You also learn like the difference between like a bit and a byte. I think a byte is like, um, wait a minute. I think a byte is eight bits, I'm pretty sure. And then, well, you know, like kilobyte, megabyte, everyone knows what those are. Uh, hmm. There's also a logic case. Um, so it was a lot of technical stuff that I didn't know before. If I took um, CSA, which I'm doing next year, I probably wouldn't really have learned that much new stuff other than how to code algorithms in Python because CSA is just programming. There's no interface. It's just, you know, the console. But yeah, that's it for my review of these three courses. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.